The Immortal Hulk, Issue 12 Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. What is the devil? In modern culture, the devil is clearly defined. He is the slanderer, the whisperer in mankind's ear, tempting us to sin against God. To break the rules by which our betters define good and evil, all evil then springs from him. We are told. From an early age we learn dichotomy, day and night, the rational and the irrational, the healer and the destroyer. On one side, then, we have the Creator, the maker of ineffable plans, who works only for our good, the mysterious and heavenly Father. Ow! My foot! Damn you, Bruce! What have I said about leaving those bricks on the floor? Brian, don't snap at him. It's my house, Rebecca. My son. Bad enough he sneaks everywhere like a... like a rat. He could at least pick up after himself. And will you please stop sniveling? God! What's this even supposed to be? What? Speak up, damn it. Gamma. Of course it is. Science City Gamma. Make or unmake a world of your own with real electronics, ages twelve and up. Twelve and up. An educational toy, too complex for a child twice your age. And the instructions are still in the box. You think I'm a fool, eh? Do you honestly think I don't know? Brian, please, he's your son. I know exactly what he is. Brian, please. Now look what you've done. Look what you've done to your mother. Before you, she was happy. She was alive before you. You damned, disgusting little monster. I... I'm going to my study. You break all this nonsense apart, do you hear me? Mommy, do, do as your father says, dear. I have to go and... and think about things. Okay. Smash! 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 <laughs> and against the father, his monstrous enemy, the breaker apart. The force of chaos. Smash! Hulk smash! Oh god, oh god. H Hulk! Hulk smash! Hulk kill! Kill everything! <sighs> Hulk! Hulk! God. We, we have to run, Dad. Don't look him in the eye. Look him in the eye. All right, Dad. Because it's you. Oh, Hulk. Smash. I, Hulk, just, just stop, please. I, I need you to stop, okay? Okay, big guy. Hulk. Hulk hurts. All the time hurts. All the time, always. Why? Why Hulk have to hurt so much? I... I don't know. I'm sorry. I... The devil, Hulk. Can I... Can I speak to him, please? Can you let him out for me? Okay. <sighs> sorry. The big guy, he's mostly inside these days. But if I really lose it, well, you saw. Yeah, I saw. Actually, I've got another question. Exactly how long have you been in charge? In charge of what? Don't play dumb. Banner has dissociative identity disorder. That's an established fact. He might be the most famous case in the world. And you're one of his multiple personalities. His alters, if you like that term. I don't. You're a part of his system. Except these days you seem to be running it. Somebody had to. But not in the day. That's Banner's time. Yeah? So where is he now? I don't know. But I've got a pretty strong hunch. Let's get moving. 
Perhaps the earliest naming of the evil force is the Zoroastrian deity Angramanyu, literally the chaotic spirit or destructive mind, that which is defined by opposition to good. In the Zervanite tradition, Angramanyu and Ahura Mazda, the lord of creation, are the twin sons of Zervan, who is time itself. Angramanyu tore free of time's womb and thus, as firstborn, inherited creation for nine thousand years. Perhaps this was the earliest conception of the fall of man, the idea that the world we are born to is tainted, ruled by God's opposite. Interestingly, Angramanyu has it in his power to create good works. He simply refuses to. Evil is actively chosen. Perhaps that is what defines the devil in the end. That moment of choice. You, you have to understand, Bruce. I was still a young man, and your mother, she had once loved me very dearly. Can you understand what that was like for me, to be loved? Your grandfather... There was no love in that house. I grew up knowing I was unworthy of it. I never could tell Rebecca that's why I didn't want children. I thought it might... might break some spell. Of course, the spell broke anyway, didn't it? But still, I was loved and respected. A rising star in the field of radiation research. Gamma radiation. You see now, son. You see how I knew what you were. The theory was simple. There were times when gamma radiation behaved unpredictably. Outlier results, minor anomalies, that's all it was back then. I thought there was a secret there. That gamma might sometimes act not as a wave or particle, but as some unknown third form. What form? What would that be? The department heads were skeptical, but intrigued. The hypothesis was daring, the early results promising. So promising that one day I stayed long past my regular hours, late into the night. Into the night. And some time in that darkness, exhausted from searching for my great secret, I closed my eyes for a moment and saw that something was searching for me. Next morning, I told the department heads they were right. It was nonsense. The respect they'd had for me never quite returned. I told myself it was only a dream, but of course that meant nothing. Dreams are binding, and I'd seen what I had seen. A grotesque presence glimpsed through a crack in a door. A nightmare cellar world underneath the floorboards of everything. I had seen its terrible eye, and now nothing could ever be the same. Everything was changed. Brian, you're back? Rebecca, why... why is there champagne? I was going to call you at work, but I wanted it to be a surprise. I'm pregnant, Brian. And I was damned. Nine months later, you were born. A difficult birth... You were all but torn from the womb. Rebecca nearly died. It didn't matter. I'd been replaced. You took the love I had from me. You did that, Bruce. You. You. And then you killed me. Your own father. At your mother's grave. In cold blood. No. No, it wasn't you, Bruce. I... I have to remember that. It was the monster who cast me down to hell. And then when I tried to... to protest the injustice of that, the monster killed me again, sent me to a farther hell, a lower deep, where the thing from my dream was waiting for me, here, below everything. Creation's secret reflection, vaster than we can see or know. It can only influence our world, you see, to work directly 
It needs a host personality, a soul it can speak and act through. It had me for that. But now, now it has you, my immortal son, heavy with the secret third form of light. You can bring our world to it, through the hole you tore with your bomb, the green door you opened, and you can set me free. But there is another devil. In the Old Testament, the book of Job is the first mention of an entity bearing the name Satan. The sun's risen, high noon in hell, he's coming. Meaning accuser or adversary. Not much farther, Creel, once we get over this ridge. As one of God's angels, Satan is given permission to test Job, God's most pious servant. I howl through many mouths. A test that destroys all Job has, all that he is. A test that scours him down to the soul. Ah! What, Puck? What is that? Job demands an answer from God. He demands to know why he was hurt so much. I break with many hands. Eventually, God responds, but he does not speak in human terms. We're too late. They are themselves, but they are also me. The 19th century theosopher Anna Kingsford likewise speaks of Satan as an angel of God. In her writings, he is the sifter of souls, the accuser who brings judgment on all who fall short, the angel of wrath. Oh, oh no, we're too late. This is, who can fight that? How can we fight that? It's the end. Hmm, that creep. He's not the end of the world, McGee. He is the keeper of the door who holds the power to cast into hell. How do you know? And he is the breaker of worlds. Because that's who I am.